Welcome, I'm Ijeoma Onyato. Tonight, academic staff union of universities embark on indefinite nationwide industrial action. Rival factions continue to disagree over President Muhammadu Buhari's continued absence from the country. Protesters hold rallies in Abuja and Kaduna. Acting President Oshibaju offers assurance of federal government's assistance to states ready to develop federal infrastructure. And scores of people die in a mudslide triggered by heavy rain near Sierra Leone's capital, Freetown. On business news tonight, Federal Inland Revenue Service plans camp down on tax evasion as the period expires in March next year. While on sports news, Real Madrid star Cristiano Ronaldo gets a five-game ban following his red card in Sunday's Spanish Super Cup win over Barcelona. And from Abuja, Edo State House of Assembly lawmakers remove Justin Okenobo as Speaker, replace him with Kabiru Ajoto, impeach Speaker Christ Fall. We begin tonight from the nation's capital, Abuja, where university lecturers have announced their decision to stay away from the classrooms until further notice. The lecturers under the aegis of the Academic Staff Union of Universities insist they will not go back to the classrooms until the federal government addresses their demands, some of which date as far back as 2009. For some university students, their holiday period begins prematurely as the Academic Staff Union of Universities embarks on indefinite nationwide industrial action, effective from Sunday the 13th of August. In 2009, the Academic Staff Union of Universities carried out a four-month strike, and in 2010, students were forced to stay at home for five months following disagreement between the union and the federal government over implementation of the 2009 FGN ASU agreement. And 2013 is not any better for students, as the union held another strike lasting six months. ASU argues that it is carrying out its current industrial action due to the failure of the government to not only implement the 2009 FGN ASU agreement, but also the 2013 Memorandum of Understanding. Based on a nationwide consultation with our members, an emergency meeting of the National Executive Council of ASU rose on Saturday, 12 August 2017, with a resolution to embark on an indefinite strike action, starting from Sunday, 13 August 2017. Key outstanding issues include the non-payment of salaries, non-payment of earned academic allowances, and the non-implementation of the provisions of the 2014 Pension Reform Act with respect to retired professors and their salaries. Come and raise the hope of Nigerians on the promise of addressing the rot and decay in Nigerian public universities with the signing of the MOU and release of the initial sum of 200 billion naira. However, the hope has since been dashed. Attempts have been made to contact the ministries of education and labor. But at the time of filing this report, neither ministry has given a statement. The last strike by ASU between July and December 2013 was suspended when the government signed a memorandum of understanding with the lecturers following a meeting with former President Goodluck Jonathan. But now, students no doubt are anxiously awaiting their fate and how long the current industrial action will go on for. And just as directed by the national body, many of the universities are already complying with a strike order. Our next report takes a look at the compliance level in some federal universities. Okay. The Federal University of Technology, Futo, Oweri, in Imo State, wastes no time in complying with the directive from the ASU. The strike is evident here. Offices are closed while students roam around the campus. In the southwest, the strike is effective at the Federal University of Technology at Kure Ondo State. The usually busy campus is almost deserted with only a few students seen, perhaps discussing the current situation and the negative effect on the academic life and calendar. No member of the ASU State chapter is available to speak to us, but a cross-section of students here share mixed feelings on the issue. All I would say is, 
federal government, they are not considerate at all. They only rely on whatever comes from above. above. They are not considering students. If at all they are going to owe lecturers money, it, it shouldn't be something that would, be, um, that would affect um, lect uh, lecturers. We also feel for them. What if my parents was a lecturer? They should pay them. They should pay them and allow us to prepare for our exams and finish on time. Not that we are thinking of graduating 2017 and well, it, is, it is now probably up to 2018. And um, even the lecturers going on strike too, they need to check me themselves. A good number of them, they are demanding for money, demanding for allowances and the likes. But are they really doing what they should be doing? I mean, do they even what's going for that strike? But I believe that it's just like when uh, there are two elephants fighting. It is always the, the grass that suffers most. And that is what is happening to us. In the Times Higher Education World University Rankings of 2016-2017, recently released, with a list of 980 top universities in the world, only one Nigerian university made the list. The poor performance of Nigeria in the global ranking of universities is attributed to poor funding, inadequate facilities for learning and research, cultism and corruption. Nigeria still lags behind in education funding, despite the recommendation by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, especially to developing countries, to allocate at least 26% of its annual budget to the sector. Loretta Chiogo, Channels Television News. Well, joining me now to discuss this issue is the president of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, Professor Biodun Ukuyemi. He joins me from Abuja. Thanks a lot for joining me on the News at 10 tonight. Thank you for having me. It's my great pleasure. Right. It's always a bit, a bit disheartening, particularly for students when they hear this sort of action. Did you, did you exhaust all avenues for dialogue before embarking on this industrial action? Yes, we did. In 2016, November, we went on one week, one strike. Uh, then the National Assembly leadership called us for interaction. And we interacted with relevant agents from the ministries, departments, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, agencies of government in Abuja. At the end of the interactions, uh, interactive sessions, all the issues were trashed, and uh, we thought we had got some understanding on how to address the problem. The problem of shortfall in salaries, uh, a process whereby our lecturer, our colleagues, particularly in federal universities, were uh, losing out as much as a quarter of their salaries or more. Uh, in state, I mean, a situation where Lecturers in state universities were not paid for months. Uh, we also had the issue of Nopenko, our, our own university-based pension fund administrator. We talked of the staff school. We talked about um, a fund for revitalization. All these issues that were brought out again in this strike action, we actually brought them up at that meeting. And the uh, government agreed that they will go back and address the, the problem. But let me talk about and academic allowances. They said they will do that within six months. Eight months after, nothing concrete has been done. So we have written about five letters thereafter. Nothing concrete has been done. So we actually feel, we feel for our students, but what we are doing is actually to protect their future and to ensure that we have university system that we can all be proud of, to ensure that we have facilities in our libraries, I mean, in our laboratories, we have books in our libraries, and our classrooms are well uh, All right. Equipped let me just um, effective teaching and learning. And teachers. Yes, uh, let me just ask. They are also well-motivated. Yeah. I'm sorry to just have to cut, to cut in then, there, but let me just ask. Looking through some of the list, um, the list of your demands, some of the demands you know, go back to 2013, 2014, and you said that you sat down and you had a conversation, and the government actually agreed to sort out the issues that even did not occur within their tenure. Is that what you're saying? Well, the issue, of, uh, the issue of governance is not about tenure, it's about continuity. And it's also about parity. Where there is political will, there will be a way to address some of these issues. Uh, go every government that comes, any new government that comes up will inherit assets and liability. So we don't really differentiate uh, between or among governments. 
we talk about continuity in governance. And if you have an understanding, the most important thing here is that we want to have a university system that can contribute effectively and meaningfully to the transformation of the country and to repositioning the country uh, for world ranking and uh, for economy. So until we agree on the purpose of our investors, on what to do to reposition our investors, back to the old days when other Africans were coming to Nigeria for education, uh, we are not going to get it right. All right. Are you insisting tonight that if your dem all your demands are not met, and there are a number of them, are you insisting that um, this strike will continue if all your demands are not met, or are you going to make some sort of concession as we go along? Is it too early? Do you know? Uh, yes, what actually infuriated our members uh, has been that government chose to ignore us. We wrote as far as the presidency. None of our letters was acknowledged. Talk less of replying. So when you see a situation like that, it is like lecturers in Nigerian universities count for nothing. And uh, since November last year, we have written about five letters. We have made contacts. We have gone for consultations. And all we had were empty promises. And our members are saying they were tired of empty promises. All right, thank you so very much, the President of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, Professor Biodun Ogunyemi, for joining us on the News at 10 tonight. Thanks a lot. Well, no going back is the new chant by the Concerned Nigerians group as their campaign for President Buhari's resignation enters its eighth day amidst widespread pro-Buhari protests in Abuja and Kaduna State. The two opposing groups of protesters converge again in Abuja and Kaduna State to reinforce their separate demands. While the Concerned Nigerians group, led by Nigeria's entertainer Charlie Boy, is calling on President Buhari to resume or resign, the rival campaign group called the Coalition of Youths in Support of Buhari insists that the president's absence has not breached any constitutional provision to sufficiently warrant the call for his resignation. For eight days since the first sit-out on the 7th of August 2017, the Concerned Nigerians group continue their resume or resign campaign against President Buhari, who has been on medical leave in the United Kingdom since the seventh day of May 2017. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, sir. For the Concerned Nigerian group, the video of President Buhari's meeting with his media team in London is not persuasive. We are not asking the media managers to show us video. No, 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 no. We want them to tell us the president is on his way. Look at what we made the, <laughs> the cabal do, the federal government do, to hurriedly put together like they always do, a video of the president to just assure us that he's in good health. But we saw through that video. We analyzed it. I must have watched that video 25 times. And I could see the deceit. I could see the lies. However, a significant number of young people from Nasara and Adama State joined the pro Buhari protesters in Abuja to reiterate their support for the president. I'm not a politician, but. I have this uh, concern in Nigeria and I supported the President Muhammad Buhari because he is my leader. my leader, leader that we vote for him with right hand, with one mind that he does not have any tribalism. If my wife in the house is sick, I'm sick. I'm not happy. But of course, what can I do about it? I'll have to pray for my wife, my beautiful bride, to get well and then let's conceive and have a baby. That's why I'm praying that my president should come back. Even outside Abuja, protests in support of the president is taking hold. In Kaduna State, where President Buhari has a house and significant local support, a coalition of northern youth also marched in support of the president. We totally support him and appreciate his tremendous achievement. Be better goal and real what constitution say about the situation of Buhari. Buhari did not leave the country without letting 
Osimbajo, his vice president, to act officially. Although the Buhari protests in Abuja have extended beyond one week, the focus is no longer on the number of days, but how it is gradually spreading to other states. In part two, after the break, governors of southeastern states target regional integration through independence power projects. That's in moments. Just stay with us.